Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of The Sheehan Show here on SureDog.com. And today I am joined again by my good friend Harry Powell, a mixed martial arts media member, BJJ practitioner, a bit of a promoter, actually, as well, I believe. BJJ, we were just talking about before the, uh, before the podcast started. Uh, and today we want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the greatest fighters of all time, uh, the former, what is it, three time? UFC light heavyweight champion, mm -hmm. uh, Johnny mm -hmm. Bones Jones, and uh, his, not necessarily his life and times, but his future, where we want to see John Jones next, if we want to see John Jones next, and maybe what the future holds for the man himself. Harry, how are you today? I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me. As always, super excited to be invited into the Sheehan Show. This is, you know, as one of the best shows that MMA media has to offer. So it, it's a real privilege. Thank you. I I, I appreciate that. Sure, it's growing, it's getting going good anyway. So we'll uh, we'll keep it going as as uh, as long as they'll have me. So we'll uh, you know as long as as like John Jones keep fucking up and making mistakes, we'll have plenty of things to talk about anyway. So uh, let's get into it. Let's start with the fuck ups, right? Because look down through the years. Um, we've all called him Teflon John. You know, he can do what he wants. He gets away with it, whether it's PDs. Should I put the word allegedly there? It's not really allegedly. Picograms, you know, running into pregnant women with his car, doing all different sorts of things. And the, the latest of which, obviously, is the uh, alleged incident in Las Vegas with his wife. Mm -hmm. We all heard the the police uh, phone call with the you know on the, the bloody nose and with the report and and everything like that, or the bloody shirt or whatever it might have been. The bloody lip, sorry, it wasn't a bloody nose; it was bloody lip, wasn't it? Um, mm -hmm. I, I I always find it with ones like them, and I, I, I I'm interested to get your opinion. If there's something like very cut and dry, and we can kind of see it, and you know she is kind of coming out and and saying what you know jones did was very bad i think it's it's very easy for all of us to kind of say look john jones he shouldn't be fighting no matter how good he is or whatever he needs to you know whether it's go to rehab and do things or go to counseling and do things and or go to jail and do things for a while for what he did but an incident like this where it's not as kind of cut and dry you know he's still with his fiance and they're, they look happy together and everything like this they're it's it's a very odd situation which we find ourselves in, and you know we're not uh, political. No, well, political is not the word. We're not news journalists or anything like that. We're very much uh, covering MMA, and we're kind of vaulted into these sort of situations. But we brought it on ourselves today to talk about it. What's your take on that from John Jones? Like in in other sports, if something like that happened and it was proven and everything like that, we we would never see that person again. You know, if that happened in the Premier mm -hmm. League. If there was something like that and it was something that was proven now, still legend and all of that with John Jones. So don't get me wrong, I'm not throwing him completely under the bus and I'm not, not throwing him under the bus as well, if you put it that way. What's your take on that whole situation? So I can only really speak about the actions that I would take. If John Jones had... I think I would have gotten rid of John Jones when it was proven that he ran, uh, ran into the pregnant woman and ran away. Because we've talked about this, I can't remember whether we talked about it on air or off air, but these incidents that you have with fighters are precursors. They're precursors of behavior. If you look at how John Jones acts in the cage, he's a bully, right? And we love that in the cage because it turns, turns into fantastic fighting. But these people are still people outside of the cage. How they act in the cage is in a lot of ways and in, in a lot of um, examples is an accelerated, exemplified version of themselves, who they actually are. So John Jones outside of the cage has proven in all of the altercations he's had and all the incidents he's had that that's similar to who he is as a character. Now, if I'm me and I'm you know, the, the head of the UFC and whatever, I'm trying to think about what that globally says to have one of the biggest stars continually involved in uh, illegal, and not just illegal, like, oh, I robbed some candy from a store or whatever, but egregious illegal activities. Um, and for me, I wouldn't keep John Jones. Like we talked, one of the most egregious things that has happened recently in, in football is the Adam Johnson saga, right? For people that don't know, Adam Johnson was caught uh, messaging 
uh, and soliciting and uh, grooming essentially uh, an underage girl. He was then banned from his club and, you know, has since done his time in jail and whatever, or is doing his time in jail. But it was immediate. As soon as the allegations came out, before it was proven, he was gone. And that's because the Premier League can't afford to have that sort of reputation tarred with their brand. But it seems with MMA and specifically with the UFC that Dana sort of rides that a little bit, you know? Yeah, he does. And it's obviously, you know, I don't think John Jones is not ending as serious as Adam Jones, but there are other incidents as well. Like, the, and there's been other, I won't name any names in case we get into different, um, you know, sorts of incidents, but there have been people in the Premier League and in other places that have either gotten long suspensions and been kind of outlawed from the game and haven't come back for incidents like that. Some have come back very rarely. Look, Chad Evans, I suppose, is, is one of those guys that didn't end up coming back. Or, you know, there's there's different sort of incidents. But as we're, we're talking about MMA, and it's a very, very different sport to uh, to those sports. And oh, look, the thing about John Jones is, right, and I, I kind of jokingly said Teflon John before, but it is, it's it's not, and it's not just the UFC. We could, you know, we could blame the UFC all day, but it's also like the legal system in America letting him get away with so many different things. And, you know, the, the and, you know, we're no experts on that, but for some of the things he's done to, to not get away with, and in some of the fighting things he's done in terms of, mm. you know, cheating and stuff like that. And the big issue with me, and we want, this is not a full podcast about this. This is mostly about John Jones and maybe even what's next and maybe even some positive is about John Jones. So I don't want to get into all of this. But the, the biggest issue, I think, for John Jones, and he, especially if you're, say, a fan of John Jones and want to see him do well, we all look, everyone wants to see John Jones doing well. But this is a reoccurring thing from Jones. It's not as if, <laughs> look, anyone can make a, a mistake. Look, if you make a mistake and run a red light and you drive into someone... You could regret it for the rest of your life. You could never do it again. It could be something horrific. Everyone makes a mistake and you could you could forgive someone, you know. John Jones has made mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. I'm going to go to rehab. I'm better now. I've changed. I've given up drink for 55 days, 42 <coughs> days after, <laughs> you know, the, the actual incident. It just feels like with John Jones, it's happening over and over and over again. And it's excuse after excuse after excuse and not even excuse. It is it is solution after solution after solution after solution. And he seems to always have it started. It seems to always be okay now. But how can it be okay when it keeps happening over and over and over? And that's one thing I know looking forward with Jones to seeing where he, he, he will go and what he will do. There was another incident that I think everyone has kind of forgotten. I can't even remember what it was in the middle of last summer. Remember, I was, was a drug driver or something like that as well. It's, it just seems like there's it's all all going badly. For, not all going badly for John Jones, but always goes badly for John Jones. But does not matter, Harry? Like, do, does not matter in terms of the UFC? Does not matter in terms of what's going to be next for John Jones in terms of matchmaking as well? Seemingly not. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the uh, the real crux of this and the, the cold hard truth of this is that Dana will never let John Jones go because John Jones is to the UFC a draw. He may not be a massive draw. We're not talking millions of pay-per-views, although maybe the Ngannou fight. But other than that, John Jones is a big name, easily promotable. He has the highlight reel. It's super easy to promote him. We saw with Mike Perry... Right? Mike Perry got into a bit of a scuffle in a casino and had a number of incidents. And Dana's like, I'm not, I'm not booking him a fight until he gets into rehab. Why? Because Mike Perry doesn't sell fights like John Jones sell fights. That's the crux of this. Yeah, that that exactly that exactly is it. But the the, the thing about it is, as, as you say, he doesn't sell them like like Jones. And the fact that Jones does sell them means he will be coming back. But also, as we kind of move on, I suppose, John Jones maybe doesn't sell enough to be totally uh cast uh, <laughs> to, to be totally uh teflon he's teflon in terms of he can do bad things or misdemeanors and stuff and they'll they'll keep him going but if he asks for an extra bit of money suddenly he's very dispensable <laughs> and that's exactly uh, sure there's there's only one man that can ask for more money you know <laughs> <laughs> i have a bottle of proper 12 here in front of me when i pull it out but but yeah it's and that's what we've seen over the last couple of years i just have it up here in front of me john jones's last three fights February 2020 was his last fight against Dominic uh, Reyes. Before that, against Thiago Santos um, in the, the summer of 2019. 
and then at the start of 2019 uh, against Anthony Smith as well. The Gustafsson fight was four months between that. So he had some, you know, he he, he had, what, three fights in, in the space of, of under a year there at one stage. But he ha- hasn't fought. Not, it's We're nearly at February 2022 now by the, by the time this comes out. That's two years out of the cage, having been out for maybe six months before that uh, as well. And then having long periods over the years being out. The question here is, and let me just look up John Jones' age as I have it here. John Jones now is 34 years of age. Oof, that was a good guess. Yeah, that was a good guess. John Jones is no longer the young upstart. John Jones is no longer the youngest champion in UFC history. He has a lot behind him. Let me look how many fights he has. 26 fights, 27 fights, a lot lot of fights anyway. Not Okay, not that much damage, but a bit over the last fight, but a lot of wear and tear. Maybe not as much preparation as as most people (laughs) like him would have. But, is there a chance, and this is a question, you know, we, it's only a co- couple of weeks since uh, Amanda Nunes fought against Juliana Pena and had that, that miraculous loss. Is there a chance that, and we'll talk about who his next fight should be and all that in, in a second, is there a chance John Jones is not John Jones anymore when he comes back? I think it's more than likely that John Jones isn't John Jones when he comes Ooh, back. Oh, that's interesting. So, if you look at Jones... Jones grew as a man. He was a, he was a boy, right? When when he first started fighting in the UFC, frankly, right? He just got out of his teenage years, and here he is beating a murderous row of light heavyweights, a, a, a row of legends, and decimating them in some of the most beautiful MMA fights we've ever seen. He grew as a man with the understanding that he was untouchable. He comes from an athletic family. He comes from a family of genetic monsters, right? All high achievers. He then has Gustafsson won, which is, you know, one of the greatest fights of all time. And there's a point there in a post-fight press conference where he says, I've never been pushed like that before. And there's a small chink. And then he has the DC stuff and he decimates DC and whatever, whatever. That chink in his head is gone. Then the misdemeanors start happening and his life starts going off the rails. I think somebody like John Jones needs success in all areas of his life to be John Jones. Now, success may be slightly different to what everyone else determines success to be. Success for John Jones, I think, is that everything goes his way. Well, he's not training at Jackson Wink anymore. He's now down with Eric Albaracin and, and Henry Cejudo. And I think that's a strange pairing, but maybe that's a conversation for, for later on. But there's no fight booked. There's no clear path to what happens next. He's just been getting massive and waiting, right? And we all know, Dominic Cruz may be the outlier with, with ring rust isn't a real thing. But we've said before that, and you had, you had a brilliant quote uh, in, in our last podcast, which was, if you're standing still, people will pass you. The game will pass you. Now, John Jones, for the longest time, was a cerebral fighter, super creative. He was a guy that we spoke about, again, not having a plan. He didn't really have a plan. He just, he fought wherever, whoever, whoever's in front of him, what's your best game? Striking, cool, I'll outstrike you. Wrestling, I'll outwrestle you. Grappling, I'll outgrapple you. Fantastic. That was him. The game is different now. The game is different. And the interesting John thing Jones, as well is, uh, sorry to cut you off, but it, it, the game was even different the last couple of times he fought. So this was, that was going to be my final point. <laughs> yeah. We've never seen John Jones more beatable than in his last few fights. Mm-hmm. And two years have passed since then. Like, is that two years a good thing or a bad thing? Did he need a break? Did he need a, a bit of time off? There's a lot of different questions. And, you know, these questions are something that we ask and they're probably will all be null and void because John Jones will probably come back at Sylvia Monster. You know, that's 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 probable, right? But what happened to Amanda Nunes, I think, kind of changes the game for a lot of us. You know, what happened to even to Poirier in a way that, that we, everyone was expecting? Him. Not me, I picked Oliveira, so I was right. But a lot of people were expecting Poirier to, to win that fight. And, and he didn't. But um, Nunes is the better example because she was the greatest of all time. A lot of people think John Jones is the greatest. You know, there's other options to that as well. I think Demetrius is the best. But anyway, um, if he if he does come back, two years out of the cage, in you know, I, I know, you know, I talk about judging a lot. John judges, John judges, John Jones's style 
is not the best style in the world for judging. You know, he's he okay, he has knocked some people out and he has good, you know, he can finish people. Um and he he has power at times, but he's not the most powerful striker in the world. He's a beautiful, brilliant tactician and really, really intelligent, probably the most intelligent fighter in the history of this sport. But that's more at like picking people apart, beating them at different areas of the game which is not as important these days impact is more important these days in judging that's another part of it the mental side of it as well the ring rust side of it we saw the last time when he put on extra muscle and he came back heavier he was in against osp probably his worst display to date now still a dominant win so that's how good john jones is but it's all those different things to consider um plus heavyweight and maybe that's the next part of this discussion uh, look, I, I, for one, love the fact that hopefully John Jones is going to heavyweight next. I've been a big advocate for, say, like a Habib Nurmagomedov going up and fighting at welterweight. Uh, you know, and people like John Jones going up at heavyweight. How excited are you for for John Jones at heavyweight? And my points there, and the points that you made as well, about him coming back. Do you think maybe the heavyweight move, maybe this is two questions, but does it benefit him to, to move up, up, up to heavyweight now? <laughs> Absolutely. So if we think about uh, Pena or Nunes, right? I mean, obviously Nunes can't really move up. There's nothing to move up into, right? But if you take a uh, Kamara Usman, if he goes from welterweight to light uh, to middleweight, or if Habib went from lightweight to welterweight, it's not you're going into another stack division. Okay, maybe not middleweight, right? But but a stack division at welterweight, a stack division at lightweight. And you know, there's some very good fighters at middleweight that, that Kamara Usman could 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 compete against. John Jones, his safest move is to heavyweight. There are two dangerous fights at heavyweight, really, really dangerous, and that is Francis Ngannou and Stipe Miocic. Right outside of those two fighters, mm, I I think you missed out the most dangerous one for John Jones. The Black Beast. No. <laughs> Cyril Gagne. I think Cyril Gagne. Cyril Gagne, of course. He's the guy. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. So outside of those three fighters, right, you're absolutely right. I, I had no idea why I forgot Cyril Gagne. I, I, and plus, let's say it right. Cyril Gagne. Cyril. Um, Cyril Gagne. Uh, yeah, like I I think for John Jones' style, heavyweight is perfect, right? You've got guys that have a round or two's gas tank they're big swings big telegraph swings big telegraph movements and john jones's style that long rangey approach that cerebral can stand off can stand in the pocket huge elbows beautiful clinch work beautiful grappling is perfect for heavyweight perfect for heavyweight the, the question also then However, is, sorry go on yeah um will okay the translation up the heavyweight right with speed yeah. can the speed translate up can the defensive nature translate up and will the fact mm -hmm. that he has that extra because it seems like he has like 30 <laughs> pounds of extra muscle put on to yeah. go up the heavyweight that yeah. change that you know as someone who kind of you know is, is more uh, uh, athletic to me I don't think anyone would have to, to guess at that one but watching fighters <laughs> <laughs> watching fighters like your John Jones his game is built around it's funny to say athleticism, but his sort of athleticism, you know, and, mm -hmm. and athleticism, athleticism of lint speed in a certain way. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just the way he fights beautifully, his, his athleticism is perfect for his technique. Now his athleticism has changed a little bit, hasn't it? Do you think that can mm -hmm. translate up to heavyweight in terms of that part of it? So I think it probably can, because at heavyweight, your ultra athletes are the fighters that we've mentioned, right? Cyril Gagne is a fantastic athlete. Francis Ogano is probably the craziest athlete we've seen in MMA ever. Forget Brock Lesnar. Um, and uh, Stipe Miocic is obviously a very good athlete as well. Outside of that, you know, I, I can't see too many people because coupled with John Jones's athleticism is his cerebral capacity. One of the reasons that John Jones is considered to be the GOAT is because his fight IQ is so incredibly high. He was just never making mistakes and he was just never, ever picking the wrong shots or the wrong positions to be. So if that can translate up to heavyweight, I think the speed and the athleticism can translate. Now, 30 pounds of muscle to put on in a year and to not test it and to not build into that frame 
is a really, really interesting question, I think. And that takes us on, I guess, to, to how they how, how we match him if he goes to heavyweight. But I absolutely think it can translate. This is John Jones we're talking about at the end of the day, right? 100%. Uh, the one question, before we move on to that question, we leave that as the last one. Sure. Okay. And and this is uh, maybe a, a bit of a meta question here and a question we talked about in, in our in our last podcast a little bit as well. But you, you said in, uh, I don't know, was it this podcast or, or the last one we did, but everyone has said it. It's not just a thing me or you have said. You know, John Jones fights against um, a striker. He strikes against him. John Jones fights against a wrestler. He wrestles against him. And that, that hasn't always been the case, but it had been the case for a long time. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and I don't know if you feel the same, but John Jones... That aforementioned performance against OSP, where John Jones came in muscled up and wasn't the same. It feels like John Jones is fighting John Jones in this one, and he wants to prove that I'd muscled up John Jones, who hasn't been out, you know, uh, drinking and doing all sorts of nefarious things uh, the week before, admitted by himself, uh, can do it. You know, the clean and tidy John Jones. uh, Well, tidy, anyway. uh, (laughs) Allegedly, John Jones uh, (laughs) can do that. I wonder, is that something he kind of wants to prove to himself? Because all of this kind of leads to that, you know? And okay, there is the... I suppose we could have a full other podcast about John Jones and the money and Dana White and all of that. That's more of like a gossipy behind the scenes part. We want to talk about the actual fighter himself and the, the, the guy himself and, and to the fight itself. But I, I wonder, is that a part of it? And then with all that said, let's, let's talk about it and finish on this. Who do, who do you want to match him against? Cause I, 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 I've done loads of podcasts. There's plenty of podcasts, out, but I looked at my fights for next year and if it's not out yet, spoiler, but I want to see John Jones go to heavyweight. I didn't say specifically mm-hmm. who I want to see him fight. But I will mm-hmm. say it here, but you go first. Who do you think? Who would you like to see? I assume you'd like to see him go to heavyweight and fight one of those guys. I would love him to go to heavyweight. Mm-hmm. I think light heavyweight is such a... It's just got a breath of fresh air to it since he's gone. And I like that. I like the ability that he... That there's just a new rejuvenation in light heavyweight. So I would absolutely love him to go to heavyweight for sure. Now, I have two hats on. I have the hat on if I'm John Jones's manager. And I then have the hat if I'm me, right? So if I'm John Jones's manager, I'm going to pick somebody like an Alexander Volkov, uh, go in there, a guy that's not a fantastic wrestler, who's a decent enough striker, but John Jones's style meets up very, very well with an Alexander Volkov. If I'm me, give me Ngannou right away. Give me the winner of Garn versus Ngannou and let's just have some fun immediately because we're we're in the, if we take everything that we've just said and, and and I think about you actually changed the way that I think about fights uh Jesus a year or so ago when on the Severe May podcast you said I want to see the best fights but deeper than that I want to see the best fights when the fighters are at their best John Jones is absolutely coming to the tail end of his career and I don't mean that in a because he's looked not so great in the last few fights, but he's had 28 fights. He's in his thirties. His athletic prime is dwindling. And regardless of what uh, supplements he's taking to rejuvenate himself or what amazing nutrition he's had to put 30 pounds of, of uh, muscle on in the last year, regardless, you know, father time beats everyone. So he's coming to the end of his career A move to heavyweight allows him to add a few more years on, but let's see him when he's at his best with the guys at his, the best that he can be against guys that are the best right now. And that's Cyril Gagne and, and, and Francis Ngarno. Exactly. And I, I, I'm, look, my answer is going to be the same as that, but I like your answer about the Volkov one. Um, I, I would throw Derek Lewis into that as well. But the, the, sure. the, the problem with that is, right, we're talking about a step before the title. And that's probably mm-hmm. not going to happen. I think it's the right way, though, because, you know, my point that you quoted there about the best when they are the best. If you want to see John Jones at his best at heavyweight, give him Derek Lewis six months before he fights for the title, you know? I think that would make him mm-hmm. his best. Now, then you draw, we're drawn back into the problems then again of money. John Jones is not going to go up to heavyweight and fight Derek Lewis because he knows he's getting less money in a fight. You know, he, he wouldn't lose. We, we all know that. But he could lose. Mm-hmm. You know, he's fighting mm-hmm. a dangerous, yeah, of course. dangerous guy. He is going to go up and fight for the heavyweight title. We all know that. And that's maybe not the best thing in terms of, you know, the best fighting the very best at the right time. Mm-hmm. So, we, you know, that's something I think we have to say in this discussion. Having said that, 
who do I want to see him fight next? Okay, we, we both agree. You would like to see him fight Volkov. I would like to see him fight Derek Lewis. Let's park that for a second and talk in, in the real life world of, of the UFC. I would like to yeah. see him fight Cyril Gagne. And the reason I would like to see him fight Cyril Gagne uh, uh, is it Gagne? Is that I, I? I'm going to keep calling him Gagne, and that's that's the way I'm going to pronounce it. Okay. I look. I think Francis Ngannou could knock out John Jones, right? He could go in there and he could walk forward and knock him out. I've been a massive fan of Francis Ngannou for years. I think he's absolutely brilliant. He's always mm-hmm. happy and joyful as well outside of the cage. He's that juxtaposition between the madman, you know, greatest athlete of all time, banger, and you know. The, the nice guy who came from nothing, homelessness, brilliant. But I feel like John Jones being like the greatest tactical fighter of all time would be able to beat that in a more... Okay, I'll put it this way. We, 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 wake, we wake up at... Well, we'd probably watch it, but we wake up at 12 o'clock noon the next day after John Jones fights Francis Ngannou. And we fell asleep 10 minutes before the fight and we look at the result and it's John Jones defeats Francis Ngannou 50-45, 50-45, 50-45. Nobody in the whole world of MMA who knows anything about it is shocked by that, are they? No one is. Absolutely no one is. And you could could say the same for Steve, you could say the same for Gan, you could say the same for everyone else. But what I want to see with John Jones is a fight where you wake up that Sunday morning and you say, you see 50-45, 50-45, 50-45, John Jones loses. That's the sort of fight I want to see. That's the sort of test I want to see. We can all, you know, see John Jones knocked out and someone catch him with a big shot or something like that. But the sort of fight I want to see John Jones in is a tactical fight between someone, you know, he could beat or someone who could beat him. And that's, that to me is Cyril Gagnon. That's the only fighter in the history of the sport that I think could do that. Maybe Steve at one time. I don't think so, though. I think Gagne is the man, and that, for me, is the reason I want to see that fight. But, Harry, we will uh, we will leave it there for today. I appreciate you joining me uh, for this episode of the podcast. I'm looking forward to seeing John Jones coming back. Uh, let us know in the comment section below who you would like to see John Jones uh, fight uh, next. And uh, Merry Christmas to, to everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Sheehan, joined by Harry Paul for Shardog.com. We'll see you all next time.